Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. This is Ruby Snack number 59, Intro to Docker plus Installation for Ubuntu. In this episode, you'll learn what is Docker, how it's different from VMs like Vagrant, and how to install on Ubuntu or a VM running Ubuntu. If you'd like to code along, and if you're not on Ubuntu, you can have a VM or virtual machine installed running Ubuntu. You can use Vagrant. Check out my series starting at Ruby Snack number 50, Installing Vagrant. I know many developers work on Macs, and so there are definitely instructions on how to set up Docker on a Mac, and I'll have a link to that at the end. But for most servers, they're running some kind of Linux. Even if you're developing mostly on a Mac, it's good to know how to install it on a Linux OS such as Ubuntu. All right, what is Docker? From the Docker website, Docker is the world's leading software container platform. Developers use Docker to eliminate works on my machine problems when collaborating on code with coworkers. Operators use Docker to run and manage apps side by side in isolated containers to get better compute density. Enterprises use Docker to build agile software delivery pipelines to ship new features faster, more securely, and with confidence for both Linux and Windows Server apps. They said container a couple of times, so what is a container? Using containers, everything required to make a piece of software run is packaged into isolated containers. Unlike VMs, containers do not bundle a full operating system. Only libraries and settings required to make software work are needed. This makes for efficient, lightweight, self-contained systems that guarantee software will always run the same regardless of where it's deployed. For example, you'd have a container for your app and then you'd have a separate container for your database. Now, how is Docker different from Vagrant or other virtual machines? All right, so Vagrant is a virtualization. It's a separate operating system. You can log into it like any kind of server or any kind of OS. It's separate. Docker is containerization. So multiple applications running in isolated partitions of a single Linux kernel. Even though there are ways to install Docker on other OSs, it's really coming down to that Linux kernel. Now, both are used to create identical shareable development environments, which would match the production environments. So again, it's another tool to make sure when you're on a team, or even if you're by yourself, you want to make sure it matches what the production environment is going to be so there's no surprises. Docker has become very popular in recent years because it is lightweight, and so it takes up fewer resources. And because you can use it for all kinds of things, there's lots and lots of documentation out there. I found it a little overwhelming when researching Docker for this episode, exactly all the things you can do and all of the documentation. For the next section, I'm going to pull from things that made sense to me. It's kind of like AWS in that there are lots of different tools and lots of different ways of putting things together. And you really just got to find what works for you for your particular project. Again, the great thing about Docker is that there are so many resources and people are really jumping on board with it. So there's lots of tutorials and lots of, again, documentation. Here's a couple other terms to be aware of when you're talking about Docker. Images, the file system and configuration of our application, which are used to create containers. You'll see that more in the next episode when we set up an image for Ruby on Rails. A Docker daemon, the background service running on the host that manages building and running and distributing Docker containers. That comes with what we're going to install in just a moment. A Docker client, this is the command line tool that allows the user to interact with the Docker daemon. Docker hub, a registry of Docker images. You can think of the registry as a directory of all the available Docker images. That's a website that the Docker maintainers manage. Docker Compose. Compose is a tool for defining and running multi-container Docker applications. With Compose, you'll use a Compose file to configure your application services. Then using a single command, you create and start all the services from your configuration. So again, for Ruby on Rails, you'd have the app and then you'd have your database on another container. Now it's time to install Docker on Ubuntu. As I mentioned, there's lots of tutorials, but I went with the ones straight from Docker. You can click on that link and you can find out more information about what each of these commands does. I'm just gonna list them out. So first we have our setup. We wanna make sure that we don't already have the Docker engine or just plain Docker. Usually this will come up with, no, you don't have it. Then of course, when you're installing on Ubuntu, you wanna update everything first with apt-get. 
And then we're going to install a few extra packages. And they recommend this so that Docker has the optimal number of resources from your machine. So hopping into the terminal, I'm going to paste the first one. And these are all with sudo, so I've now logged in that. And it says, oh, you don't have it. Totally fine. So now let's app get update. And I'm going to skip ahead for things that take a long time. That takes a little bit of time. And this one actually took the longest time, actually. So I have skipped far beyond this. It actually took about five minutes to install. It was quite long, maybe faster on your machine. Now we're going to set up the repository and we're going to be using Docker CE. There is a Docker EE for enterprise level folks that have paid for a subscription. So we're just doing the free version. We're going to download the package and we're gonna make sure that it's there with that fingerprint. And then we're gonna add that repository. And we're going to use the stable version. I'm not really into using the edge versions. So back in our terminal, I'll just paste in that we're going to download. And I know I have a lot of invalid things here. That's just my machine. I need to fix that up. Some file is kind of wonky. So you probably won't see those ignoring files things. But I thought I'd go ahead and get this on out. So now we're adding the stable version and that's it. Now it's time to install Docker. So we'll update again to make sure that those packages are included in apt-get. And then we're going to apt-get install Docker CE. And then finally, we're going to enter sudo docker run hello world. And hello world is a test image that Docker has to make sure that everything is working. So again, back in our terminal, we will update. And this doesn't take as long because we updated earlier as well. Now we're going to install the Docker CE and yes, go ahead and use up more space. And that does take some time, so I skipped ahead. Finally, we're going to run that image. And as long as it comes up with something like this, hello from Docker, everything's fine, then you're good to go. Now we use sudo for all of these, but that would be annoying to use all the time. So you can manage Docker as a non-root user. You would add a group called Docker then you would add your user to that group. The directions say to log out and log back in, but I actually had to go ahead and restart my entire computer, and then I was able to run the command without sudo. So see what works for you, I had to restart. So you see here that I ran the commands, and I already had a Docker user group, probably from a different experiment, and I added my user, and then you'll see if you just run it right away, then you get this permission denied error. That's when I went ahead and rebooted my computer. And now when I run Docker Hello World, it runs correctly. The final piece we're going to install today is Docker Compose. Because we are going to use that in the next episode. You would go to this link for the most recent release. You would copy the curl code that it puts in there. And I was a little confused, but the next line is actually a separate command. So first is the curl command that ends with that user local bin docker compose. And then you would have another command that changes the mod. So here we are pasting that in, but I have a permission denied. Uh-oh, what do I do then? So if you do get a permission denied error, and it says that right in the documentation, you would need to go into a super user state. So sudo-i. You would have the same commands, and then you would exit to be back as your usual user. So trying this again, I'm going to have that one, and I'll have to enter my password again because I rebooted the computer. And so here we are curling for Compose, and then we're going to, oops, I copied it all again this time, and that left me with that change mode on another line, so I'm just going to enter, and then it's going to run, and now I'll exit. So now let's check the installation. Let's make sure it's really there. Running Docker Compose version, and if you get a response, then it's good to go. Here's just a couple of links that I referenced. They do have a whole tutorial that's actually on GitHub that you can you know, play with. This had the information about the other terms. Here's more information about post-installing, you know, after to make sure you don't have to use sudo all the time. And then the last one is where you can find more information about installing Compose, but that actually also has links to install Docker on various operating systems. So I shared that one, and you can go from there. That's it for this episode of Ruby Thursday. Thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new to Docker, I hope you feel a little more comfortable. If you knew a little bit about Docker, hopefully you know a little more. 
If you are not already on my mailing list, head on over to rubythursday.com to sign on up. And if you are not subscribed on YouTube, click that big red button to do so. You get the episodes just a little bit before everyone else. If you have any questions, please leave them on YouTube. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.